it's really an honor for me to introduce um, Neil, someone which is a friend of mine since, yeah, since Toronto, I think. And when I met him in Toronto, I had the feeling he has found a home in the Ipso family for his passion to support people with Prader Willi syndrome, to find the highest possible quality for him, for, for, for the people with Prader Willi syndrome. Since that time, he has contributed with great success to the fact that new modern and offers for Prader Willi syndrome have emerged and continue to emerge in Down Under. And therefore, I'm looking forward to his comments on transition and look forward to our subsequent discussion. Neil, it's your turn. Thank you. Today's um, talk or um, information is around transition for people with Prader-Willi syndrome. Um, to start with, um, it's a very broad topic. It's a large topic and, and everyone will have their own opinions and information on that. So just have a look at some of the things that we're gonna discuss or I'll discuss today in terms of the topic is uh, navigating the health system, uh, which is also a very important one. I, I'm, not the, I'm not a great health expert in terms of that, but I have been involved in helping people transition from adolescents to adults in the health system. So we do know a little bit about that building relationships um, so when, when you obviously, and it's a big part of your development and growth is building relationships. So how do people with Prada Willie going from 13, 14, 15 to 17, 18, 19, building relationships, moving from a schooling model of where they sort of, um, have been day-to-day -day living into day programs or potentially work in the future or further study, um, uh, accommodation is also a big part of moving in. So moving from the family home into a, a new accommodation setting. And also I think that the, the biggest one for me is newfound independence, living in a family unit where you're protected, the decisions you make to a time where you actually have decisions that you can make on your own. How do we help facilitate that? How do we help give people autonomy, people with Prada Willi autonomy to make some decisions on their own, but in a safe environment. So as, as you can see here, it's a very broad topic that we're gonna to discuss today. Just quickly, a little bit a quick about myself, because um, I think it's important to know who's a bit of background about who's actually doing this. So I've been working in the disability field since 2007, managing supported accommodation units for people with disability. I'm currently employed by a company down in Melbourne, called Home at Scope. And down in Victoria, we currently, and hopefully um, that will change soon, but we currently manage one of the only specific Prada Willi units for obviously for a young adults um, with Prada Willi. Uh, we first set that up in 2014. Um, and as I said before, it's the only accommodation currently set up specifically for people with Prada Willi syndrome. We have five young men in there at the moment. Uh, um, I attended, I was very lucky enough that I attended the 2016 PWS International Conference in Toronto. That's where I met many people on the on the line tonight. So Hubert and Norbert, and also I think James O'Brien's there. We all met up and that was my first taste of international priority because when we first set up the home, there was no, there was no, uh, uh, there was not another home to bounce ideas off. There wasn't much information about what we were doing. And as I'll speak a bit later, we got a lot wrong. We got a lot right and we're still learning today. So this is why getting information about transition especially is really important. Um, and then lucky enough in 2017, I was given the chance to study um, with Hubert and Norbert in Sydney um, with Interaction, a company which also has several PWS houses in New South Wales. Uh, in 2018, I was, I was the Australian rep representative on the um, PPCB. And then in 2019, I was again lucky enough to attend the Cuba conference, which again was a fantastic conference and built up more uh, knowledge around the area. And from that, I was elected onto the PPC board. So just quickly a disclaimer, and I know this says it, I don't have all the answers, and I know it says it, but what I do have is some understanding and knowledge about what we did in transitioning young adults into into accommodation and into transitioning into an adult world. 
And we're currently doing that now because we never finished. Um, and I won't sit here and say I have all the answers because we don't. And what I think is quite interesting, I've done some research. I had a bit of a quick research, bit of Google Scholar, got onto my old university, um, my old university um, websites and had a look for some research papers out there on what there actually is on transition um, from adolescence to adulthood for people with Prada Willi. There was one or two articles which were quite informative on health models and what, what we should look out for. Um, but there wasn't much on actual practical use about people moving from, uh, an, from adolescence to adult, into an adult world about what sort of what we should be looking for in terms of in terms of accommodation. How do we get people to feel more social and interact with peers in their age group? Um, how do we how do people go living together and ideas and suggestions about people integrating together and living under the one house and the one roof? So there wasn't too much information out there. So I think what we're looking to do is, as I said, I don't have any, I have a little bit of knowledge about what we've done and I'd like to share that with you tonight. But also echoes are about your thoughts as well. So we really want to use this program and we've discussed this at some of our PPC board meetings is getting your discourse, your information, discussing what your ideas are as well, because there is a lot of knowledge out there and we want to tap into that uh, because what works in one country or work for one group doesn't always work for another. For example, and you would know what works for one person with Prada Willy might not work for another person. So what we're hoping to do, and I was discussing this the other day, is once we finish, once I've had my little bit of a spiel and had a bit of a chat, we want to open up the floor and get your ideas and discussions from, we want to build those ideas. And then when we get to Ireland, we're going to present this again with some other ideas and, and hopefully start, uh, start a conversation out there about what is what does it look like and how is the best ways to help transition young adults, adolescents into an adult world for Prada Willy. As I said, there's not much out there. So um, we're hoping that we can get your work together. We can all work together and that we can present something and start that dialogue. And then for future generations, there'll be something that they can go to. So the three areas I really want to focus tonight is, as you can see there is, the medical sort of model or the ideas around the medical transition, the social transition and what it looks like in a social world, and then the environmental. Now, the great thing is, is that they all interact in one. So as you can see there, there is a, a cross section between medical, social and environment. And what I'll do is I'll go through each one of them with some of the ideas, what, what we're talking about, what we're looking at, and then maybe come up with some of the things that we've used in Australia, in, in, in down in Melbourne. And then hopefully afterwards, as we said before, we get some of your ideas and we can bring them together. So firstly, the medical, medical transition. So for, for someone who is an adolescent, a young, a young person with PWS, they have such a great network. I know down in Victoria, the one thing that we've always said with our adults is, gee wish, I wish that we still had that adolescent model for our adults. You've got under the one roof at the, at the um, children's hospital down here in Melbourne, you've got your endocrinologists, your dietitians, physical therapists, speech therapists, GPs, geneticists, all together. And that's just to name a few, all the services together working as one. You have a, you have a pediatric team um, and, and the difficulty is there's a major difference between a pediatric team working together um, to what it looks like in the mainstream adult services. There, obviously, a lot of these um, specialists are multidisciplinary, and it's probably not going to come up there in my speak in the, um, in the auto queue, but they, they understand from a pediatric service what it is to need to look after someone with, a, with PWS. And they're always in constant co contact with the phys physical therapists, the dietitians, the GPs. They work really close together. Another thing is, that's, if you look at it from a, uh, from a, uh, a position of, of a family, a lot of these families have been with the same physicians and specialists since birth. So that's potentially 18 years of knowing the same doctor. 
And really that makes families very happy and comfortable in an environment where they're feeling they are being supported. So it's a really great system for young children growing up into adolescence before they move into, into adulthood. Then we look at the adult service, and this is where it can be a bit disjointed. You can see the person there with Prada Willy in the middle, but you have a dietitian onto one side, potentially you have a psychiatrist on one side, you have a psychologist working there, and down there you have maybe an occupational therapist. You also have your GP. I go back to a time when I first started um, working with young gentlemen with Prada Willy syndrome. Neil, Neil. And I found. Yes. Yeah, only a question because you say GP, maybe not all people know what GP means. A doctor, your general physician. So your doctor that you would see around the corner. Apologies for that. Yes, you're right. So it was quite funny. When I first went to my, when, I, when we had, we moved some residents into our new facility, we went to our local doctor, GP, general practitioner. And the doctor actually had to Google prada Willy syndrome, which shocked me, which was quite shocking. And this is some of the things that we find when you go into an adulthood and we're making decisions and we're going out into the world, we're choosing doctors, we're finding that the experience is, is, and, and knowledge is not as quite as strong as in an in a, in a, in a experienced uh, pediatric team that is working with people with Prader-Willi syndrome. Again, there's no team. It's very difficult to organize dietitians and psychiatrists and occupational therapists all to work together under the one under the one roof um, and 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 to be quite frank to be quite frank there's not as many um, as this is from my experience in Australia we find that there's less uh, specialists who have understanding in at the adult condition uh, for people with Prada Willy syndrome so the specialized services are reduced to an extent and this is very I find it quite common in down in Melbourne Victoria I know up in Sydney, they have a good team that's working there, but we don't have that replicated in Australia. So these are some of the difficulties when you've transitioned from a, a sort of a adolescent world into an adult world. So again, some of the real barriers to the medical transition is the emotional attachment built between families and the pediatric team. So there is an emotional bond between the family and the person with PWS. They've grown up for 18 years for a lot of their life. They've seen the one doctor, they've seen the one specialist under the group. And then all of a sudden, when you become an adult and you move out of the home, you might move out of a geographical loca location into a new one. You're seeing new doctors, you're beginning again. And that's always difficult. It's always a difficult time. Um, we find that adults with PWS, um, they, patients um, generally start to show more cognitive impairments potentially, and they might struggle some um, specialist struggle with understanding the, PW, the pediatric issues in adults. So we find that there's, there are some cognitive issues that grow on, and is it because they have, they're still growing and developing, or is it their cognitive impairments. Um, psychological and, and psychiatric problems become more prevalent in adults, which weren't um, prevalent, uh, which weren't around when you had younger adolescents. So we're moving into a different world in terms of the needs of a person with Prada Willy. Um, a lot of the services, like I've said before, under, aren't, under the, aren't contained under the one roof, like in a specialist service for people with, um, for, for adolescents. And lastly, I find that we also have a lot of issues with autonomy and consent. When you become an adult, people start to, the, a person with a PWS, with PWS can start making decisions for themselves. How do we work through those barriers? They become quite difficult going forward. I have one person right now who has seen five specialists in the last five years. And he, after about a couple of months, he doesn't want to see that specialist anymore because he doesn't like the conversation that he's been told. Um, about his diet and his medical needs. So he chooses to go see someone else. Now that's his decision. Now, as an adolescent, when you're living at home with family members, you don't, you, you generally, we, you won't get that. You don't have that ability to make those decisions. So obviously there's a lot of barriers there to the medical transition. So just a few things in overcoming those barriers. It's really important to start early. Start early, 
with overlapping the communities of practice. So what you want to do is if there's a specialist adult endocrinologist that has been recommended to you, then start the transition early. When you're 14, 15, 16, bring them in together with your adolescent, your pediatric endocrinologist working with the adult endocrinologist. So it's not so much of a shock that you're going from a, an, adult, a, a, an adolescent world to a, uh, an adult world. So it's not so much of a shock for the family and also the person listening with PWS. So they get time, get used to them. Same with dietitians, speech pathologists working. It's important that there is information sharing between both worlds, adolescent world and an adult world. In Australia, we have case managers or we have, we have support coordinators. These are people who it's their involvement that they're supposed to what the services are out there and what can be worked in. So it's important that we find a case manager or someone who is a specialist in that area who understands the needs of Prada Willy and can direct the family or the person with PWS in the right direction. Another great tool is utilizing the, the, the localized support network. So out uh, in each area, you have your own networks, PWS associations. I know that uh, down here in Australia, we've been working on getting a, a list, uh, almost a list of those people who have understanding of PWS condition, PWS condition and can work with people. So it's important to tap into those networks of people who have been there before and and get the idea of what is out there because sometimes it can be it can be quite scary going into a world and finding walk walking into an endocrinologist who doesn't have quite an understanding of Prada Willy then finding finding someone who does and that could be really important especially for the person with PWS but also families and the networks of people who are supporting them and also services working together the one thing that we try at our house is we try and have one dietitian for the group home. We try and have one endocrinologist for the group home and we try and have one speech pathologist or professional under the one roof. So they're all working together, especially the one key one for, for me is the dietitian working together. So it just makes life a lot easier if, if, if all the services are working together. So the dietitian can work with the endocrinologist, understanding the diet, what are the needs and the changes. It doesn't always work that way. And sometimes it can be very difficult to find those. And as I said, one of the barriers is people can make their own decisions about who they want to choose or who they want to have in their life. But if you can, if you can get them working together, it's going to make life a lot easier. So at that, at that high overarching level, everyone's working for the one person and understanding. The second area that we're going to talk about is the environmental transition. And when we talk about environmental transition, I mean the bricks and mortar, just the everyday, the environment that someone will be living in and, and working. So a few areas that I'm, I'm trying to discuss here is from, for example, the family home to a group home or individual housing or a service supporting someone. From school um, to adult day programs or further study, and then potentially transitioning to employment. So going forward and looking at employment, how do we support people in those areas when we're transitioning them into going from, a, from living at home and going to school or juvenile services into, hey, I'm an adult now and I wanna be employed. How do we help that transition for the person with PWS? So supporting environmental and transition is really important. When we talk about day programs or employment, it's important that the people who are working in those services have some training in prada willy syndrome. It's really important. I could tell you a story about we had a, 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 we had a case manager who wasn't familiar with prada willy services. And the person with prada willy who had just turned 21 had picked up the phone and called them and said, look, I really want to work. I want to get into employment. I want to work. Fantastic. She thought, great, this is a great idea. Next minute, I've got a phone call and said, you know what? I've got a job for him. He's got an interview at McDonald's. Red flag straight away. It's not the greatest idea. It can be quite difficult. He was really happy with that, really happy with that. But is that the best service or employment or best area for them? So it's really important that the services or the employment or the, 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 the networks they're going is that they are trained and they understand. The other thing to think about is 
and when we're talking about employment or day program is transport. There is a sense of autonomy with people with, with, who are adults. Where I work, we actually look at them, uh, the people with PWS, having the gentlemen who live in the group home, which I look after, having some autonomy and actually traveling on their own to and from their programs, which is fantastic. We do that. But how do we set that up? We set that up quite simply as we got out there, we took them from, um, from point A to point B, how to travel, how to get there, how to get home. We know what time we, they finish. We know what time they start. We know what time they're expected to be there. We've had some bumpy roads along the way. For example, stopping off at, um, stopping off at a supermarket and getting lollies and things like that. But for the majority of the time, because we set up the transport and how they're getting there, it's worked really well because they really enjoy that sense of autonomy and having those decisions and being able to be independent, which is really important. So if you can do that, I think it's really important to help support with that transition for the person with PWS. The other thing I meant before, like I said before, from a medical point of view, a case manager or a support coordinator is what we call them in Australia, is vitally important. Someone who understands the syndrome, who understands the needs of a person with Prader-Willi syndrome. So they have, a, they have a strong sense of what the services are out there in the community, what they can go to, and they can support that person in getting to where they need to be, whether it be employment, whether it be a day program, but it's really important that they have that strong connection with that person and an understanding of their needs. So it just takes that pressure off the person or the network around that person or the family. So it's not the person always with Prada Willie really always trying to find, it's someone in their corner helping them find services and getting to help them reach their goals of what they want to do. So case managers and some, or support coordinators who have some understanding of Prada Willie and training of Prada Willie are really important to help with that transition. The second really important is housing couple of things around the housing so when we get to 18 19 typically i find when people are moving into their own space we have parents who are who are aging unfortunately who feel that they're in a bit of trouble they can't look after the person probably anymore it's it's a bit of a struggle they come to our they come to a service we look at the housing model now when we started back in 2014 our group home we we can take away a lot of learnings from what we did what we did right and what we did wrong and i'm happy to say that because i know for the next time we have a system that we know from our learnings that we got wrong we can get it right as well we got a lot right as well at the same time but one thing that i think in australia which is quite fundamental is that we blanket everyone with prada willie under the same blanket we say well if you've got prada willie and you've got prada willie and you've got prada you can all move into the same house together and we got to realize that that's not always going to work unfortunately people with prada willie they are on a spectrum we have different levels different needs different support needs so we got that quite fundamentally i think sometimes we can look back and say we got that wrong the location of the house where is it located is it located right in the heart of you know if we're looking to start from scratch are we putting a, a house right in the middle of a busy shopping center around the corner where there's lots of temptations and things to go around or is it a nice quiet street um, a place where there's activities around where they can go to parks where they can get out and exercise all those sorts of things so location can be really key is it close to transport like i said because we people with pws love to have autonomy and they love to have independence so is it a place where they can actually get out and use public transport it's going to help with that transition i know that i've got someone who's looking to move into a new group home recently and the one thing he goes i don't want to be anywhere which is far away from public transport so i can get out there and move around second area to help with this transition is staffing and support networks within the facility so staffing is a key and we all know that i know i'm tell, i'm probably speaking i'm probably speaking things that you already know and talking about that but staffing is a key a real key area it's important that the staff have a very good understanding and knowledge of prada willie but not only just prada willie as we said it's a spectrum disorder they need to know what the actual person's specific who moves in their needs specifically for example in the house that i work in i've got i've got a few people that would 
struggle around food that left out. And I've got someone who actually works in food handling at the moment without a problem. So it's really important to get to people and staff working in that environment that A, understand Prada Willie and B, actually understand the person with Prada Willie and are willing to look in to learn about that person. And the training beforehand is, is the most important thing. We really are going, we're, and we're not, we never stop training. We're always developing our training systems. We're always training. We're always learning something new. We have a good network back home in Melbourne around our training for people. The, the, the next part is the gradual move-in. Again, if I'm talking about what we learned, what we got wrong and what we got right, one thing was one minute the group home was open, that closed, and we were doing some renovations. Three days later, it was open. It was open. And we didn't have that gradual move in. So, so, so to support that transition into housing, it's really important to have a gradual, get them to come in, feel the fabric of the house, let them get an understanding of where things are and the location, spend some time with a couple of other residents who might be moving in so they get that feeling they can move in together so they don't feel like they're missing out. If one person moves in on a Monday and another person moves in on a Tuesday, this can cause some conflict. Why do I not get to move in on Monday when so-and-so gets to move in on Tuesday? Physical layout, I've got a, a sort of a, I've got a, a um, structural plan of a physical layout, I'll show it in a second, but again, the physical layout of the, of the property is, is utmost of it, is, is very important. Our original house was not the greatest physical layout, Bedrooms used to open onto each other. So when people had enough of each other and they weren't, they were a bit upset with each other, they would go to their room. If they were still a bit angry, they'd open the door. Someone would open the door and they would bump into each other. People would probably need their space. So it's really important. A good, strong routine I found was really important. We had someone who moved in who didn't have a routine and it took us three months to actually build a routine. We had someone who we built up a routine from home with the family before he moved in. And when we got into the house, we kicked goals from day one, which was fantastic. Routines are really important that when they come into the house from day one, they have a good, strong routine. The last really important one is family's expectations. We've got people from Prada Willie who've come from a family unit, a family home, and they've got expectations of what it's like and they, they're going to come into a new world. So it's important that we're working closely with the families so they understand that when they're no longer at home, Decision making is a bit different. I had I had parents from time to time who wanted me to be their be a father figure or a, 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 you know or or to parent them. That's not our role. Our role is support workers. We're there to support them. I, I'm not there to tell people off. Um, we're not parents, but it's important that we work with the families around their expectations as well. So that can be a really important part in the environmental transition. I'll just have a look here. This is a, a house layout that we're working on currently for a new design for um, a, a three bedroom house. Um, and I've got, if you can have a look here, as you can see here, we've got an open plan sort of shared area here where we've got uh, a staffing room and a, a bedroom overnight and a staffing office. We have a kitchen here, which is in the sort of the staff. And we've got three self contained units, which are all interconnected by a pathway outside, um, but in each unit you have your own living room, your own bathroom and laundry and your own bedroom. One thing I've learned people working in environments with people um, with Prada Willie is that yes, they can be very sociable from time to time, but also they need their space. And it's really important, especially when you have people who have hoarding um, tendencies and so on. So space is a key. So to have the ability to come together in a communal area, but then have your own space is really important. Okay, so moving on to our last sort of area, which I want to talk about is social aspect of transition. And I know I'm getting on for time here. So realistically, what we want to look at when we're talking about social transition is, is from adolescence to adulthood is friendships. Again, we want to talk about the idea about shared accommodation, independence and autonomy. Again, a really important aspect. When you turn 18, just like us all, we get that sense of freedom. We want to be able to make decisions. How do we go about giving people that idea of having that sense of making their own decisions? I love this one that I learned from Nor Norbert and Hubert. Egocentrism. It's a really important one. 
person with Prada Willie generally is a little bit about themselves. Why is it, you know, why can't I have what X, Y, and Z? Why can't I have what they're having? So there is that part of egocentrism, learning to understand that there are other people's needs within uh, a new social dynamic that they're in. Um, relationships, um, sexual relationships, uh, relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, they're all the same. They want, they, they're looking at them, they're, we're talking about how do we develop those and how do we help the transition from adolescence into adulthood with relationships. And finally, family. It, it's a really difficult world going from a family environment where you have been the one person being looked after, you're in the, you've been, you're almost uh, in a place where you've been protected your whole life. And then all of a sudden, the doors have opened and you're in, in the adult world and you can start making decisions for yourself. These are all difficult aspects about the social transition. Just some quick areas about supporting social transition. Early socialization with peers is, is key. So getting out there and, and mingling with people with PWS in your, with your peers, your own age group, getting to spend time with them, not in a stressful environment, but in an enjoyable environment. Is it out in the park? Is it in bowling? All those sorts of things. Finding role models. It's one thing that I've found has worked really well. I've got a gentleman who's a bit older with PWS, has lived a life, lived a great life. And he's been really great in socializing with people who are a bit younger and, and sort of giving them a bit of a heads up on things that are right and things that are wrong. And I'm finding some of the guys that we're working with are actually listening and understanding. So they're taking on board some of the learnings from older role models. Managed independence is a, is a, is a difficult one. People with Prada Wheel, as we know, when they get to 18, 19, 20, 21, in their family environment, environment, independence is key for them. They want to feel independent. It's so important for them. And we want to try and give them that autonomy, that independence with their finances, with so many things. But how do we do it in a safe environment? What we find works at our group home is a little bit of managed independence. So we put them in a bit of a, in a box, continue to move the box a bit, bit larger every time or smaller if we have to, but we give them that independence to make decisions within a box that we try and set out to give them that, uh, that, that, that feeling that, hey, the, here's, here's a question that you have. Here's the answers for you. You get to choose the answers, but as the least resistance, so it's not going to put too much strain on them. So I, I, an example in terms of finance is we, we have someone who goes out, he's, he's pretty good. If, if you say to him, here's some money for lunch, or you take your card and he's got money on it, he will spend too much. If I give him and ask him what he wants for lunch, and he'll say, well, I want a sandwich and a coffee, and I know that's only going to cost $10, I'll hand him $10. And when he comes back, he generally brings back a dollar change, or if it was nine dollars, he brings that dollar change. He doesn't go too far with that, and he's really happy with that. Whereas if I, if you give them that little bit extra step, and we give them the card, all of a sudden, tap, 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 we're spending up big, and we're trying to manage that expectation. Christmas time, I like to take the boys down to the pub for Christmas, a pub lunch, and what we do is, right, here's the menu before we get into the pub. You can have a beer. But here's the menu and here's some of the really good items that you can choose. Five or six from the menu that are really going to be going to be that are good for you. You know, maybe a little bit of something, maybe not too bad for you, but they're having a choice and they're really enjoying that and they feel like they're getting their independence. Another one is understanding the communication needs of the individual. So as we know, people with Prada Willy that tend to be, as I said before, they take what you say with a like, like it's um, we're going to go to the beach on, on Saturday. It might be minus five degrees and snowing on Saturday, but they still want to go to the beach because you said we're going to go to the beach. So it's really important to understand how to communicate to the individual with part of Everyone is a bit different. So learning their communication styles and needs is really important. Uh, again, important. Uh, again, support networks to understanding part of Willie about training, getting people around there and making sure they have a lot of the people who are supporting them have the best knowledge around Prada Willie to make sure you're supporting those people with Prada Willie. Um, continued learning. We never stop learning. I think it's really important. Never stop learning people with Prada Willie because there's always changes. Like we're doing right now, we're learning about transition. As I said before, there's not too much information specifically about transitioning from adolescents to adults with Prada Willie, especially when we're talking in social situations. We're also talking about 
environmental, there's a little medical, but continued learning. So here we have an opportunity to get people from around the world, their ideas and what they're doing and put it together and present it back and start a dialogue and do those things. And lastly, working with the families. And again, it's about those families' expectations. Families have an expectation when they come from the group home or they group home or they come from home and move into a group home space or when they're out and in an adult world, the families have an expectation about what they want. They want to protect their child at all costs. And that's fair enough. I understand it. One of the really hard things I've had to learn is to understand that parents have had 18 years. Some of it hasn't been happy times. Some of the times they've had to learn and deal with a lot. So it's important to understand the needs of the families so we can understand what they're going through so we can help them through the transition and journey. Um, I, I've always found that's really important because sometimes we, we have difficult um, and frank conversations with families about what we can do and what they want us to do, but it's really important to understand what they've been through along the journey. So it's really important to work and that will then help us because what we don't want, we wanna be working and be on the same page as families. We don't wanna be disjointed and coming from two different areas where we're butting heads all the time. We wanna make sure we're working together together with families. So working with families is a key to help for the person with PWS in that transition to adulthood. So just in summary, and I apologize, I might've gone a bit too long. It's hard work transition, it's, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. But if we have a good community of practice, if we have the support networks around us, we're gonna have a better shot at it. Networking is key. Get out there and find your networks who are there to be supporting you. Is it the local Prada Willy chapter or associations in your country? Or um, is it, is it um, university studies? Um, is it um, medical professionals who have had some dealings with quite a way? Is it, is it another home that works in another community or works for another company? It's really important to network and share that. And also early interventions. And I lost the last word, intervention. If we start early as someone as an adolescent and we realize that when you're 14, 15, 16, and we realize that we have a goal that they're going to move into adulthood and we want it to be the easiest transition, start early, start working young so they get an eye and a sense of in the, an eye and a sense of in that world of what it's like. If we just one day all of a sudden drop them off in a, an environment, it's not going to work. It really isn't going to work. So starting early is important. So I guess this is now over to you. Um, other, like obviously there are some questions as I answer them, I'll try my best to answer, but you guys also out there will have the answers as well. What about your experiences? What do you find works for you? As I said, everyone has a little bit, is a little bit different in how they work and, and different countries have different areas of practice. But what we want to do is let's start a conversation about this, because as I said before, at the start, there's not much information out there. And, and what I'll do is I'll take this. I've already spoken with Shelly. I'll take your, the dialogue that we have today and I'll collate ideas and we'll present them in islands. In hopefully we can all be there in, 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 a, in a new world and we can be there together. So that's, that's it. Over to you guys. Thank you.